Well, this morning I had a dentist appointment uh, for a really deep cleaning for my teeth because again team keep it clean is not just for YouTube it's a lifestyle but anyway um, for that dentist appointment they were like hey for this cleaning we are going to numb one side of your mouth your cheeks your jaw is all gonna be numb and I was like okay let's let's get it let's do it and so she took out this needle and she used the needle to inject the, the, the numbing whatever into my gums. And I sat there and I tried to take it and I took it. But then silently, a tear, it rolled down my face. And it's the same thing for Ravens fans when they heard this news be, that T. Martin is staying for now. Uh, because the Bills, they decided, hey, you know what? Um, we are going to just promote from within Ken Dorsey is going to be our guy. And something that I mentioned earlier, uh, especially this offseason, it's just crazy. It gives you, you get that reminder, that, that little tap on the shoulder like, man, you are getting old. Or actually, you are already old because when you start seeing or you keep seeing players that you've seen, not just in the pros, but guys that you saw in college. Like, I remember Ken Dorsey, he was at the University of Miami, I believe. Him playing quarterback, I think, what was he, number 11 or something like that? But now he is going from QB coach for the, of the Buffalo Bills, and he's getting promoted to be their offensive coordinator. So T. Martin, as much as I really did want him to get the job, I, I, I really did. I was hoping that he would get it, um, but unfortunately he didn't. Uh, but it is fortunate for the Ravens because he gets to stay. Uh, and he gets to help these Ravens for another year. And despite all the concerns and the issues that a lot of people have with Greg Roman in the offense overall, uh, there was an improvement with the wide receivers. There was an improvement with the passing game. And again, they do go hand in hand. Uh, and it's important to, to realize what this could mean for the future. This allows the Ravens to hold on to T. Martin and it allows him to possibly be next in line for that offensive coordinator position. And I think that Greg Roman, uh, I think he would have been a fan uh, of T. Martin getting that offensive coordinator job with the Buffalo Bills because I think that would have taken just a little bit of pressure off of him because, again, it, it's like all, all these signs are pointing to him being next, next up. All these signs. Even though I, I still think that the Ravens, I think the Ravens should, whoever the next offensive coordinator is, I think it should be uh, T. Martin. But I think they'll look at uh, James Urban first. Uh, and he's the current QB coach for the Ravens. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but this does, in my opinion, it keeps just a little bit of pressure uh, on one Greg Roman. And the reason I say that is because T. Martin, he was brought here, him and Keith Williams. Again, I'll take you back to last year. Um, if, if you are working at a job and you are you're good in one, you're great in one area of your work. And, and this, this area that you're great in, um, this is part of your responsibilities of your job. But you also have some other areas that are responsibilities of, of your job that you're not so great in. And that's what happened with Greg Roman. Hey. Running game, amazing. All these amazing concepts, the designs, the schemes, running game, wow, it's great. But the passing game has seemed to always be a struggle uh, wherever Greg Roman has been. Um, this is not new news. This is it's not a shot at Greg Roman either. That's just been what it is. So if you struggle in a certain area and your job hires people to help you in that area that you struggle in, that says a lot. That says exactly how your place of employment feels about you. They're like, hey, we gave you an opportunity to get it right. We gave you an opportunity to fix this. We gave you two years. And, oh, we haven't seen any improvement. We haven't seen enough improvement. So we are going to hire somebody from the outside and bring them in to help you where you've been failing us at as a company. It says a lot. And that's enough pressure on you as is. So there has, but there has been a, uh, a, a an improvement uh, in Ravens passing game uh, overall. They still have some ways to go. And one thing that I, I think about 
And shout out to my guy, Tony, because he put this in the simplest terms. Because uh, we were having conversations with different people yesterday about, man, why, why is it that Greg Roman hasn't had an opportunity? Um, nobody has reached out to him to be a head coach. With all these different uh, teams that fired their head coaches this past year, all these different vacancies, nobody had reached out to Giro. Um, and, and my guy, Tony, put it in such simple terms, but I was like, wow. And he was like, well, Giro, he's an offensive coordinator, but he's a run-first offensive coordinator in a pass-first league. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> well, I'll be. be. That's it. That's it. Simple as that. That's it. Like, no more needs to be added to it. He said it perfectly. It just makes it clear as day. He's a run-first offensive coordinator in a pass-first league. And I was like, wow. So, you see, sometimes the most simple things can be uh, the most effective. And, and, and that was really effective to me. It really impacted me and my thought process with just really everything. So and he specializes what he specializes in, but where he doesn't, again, that's where Ravens brought in help. But if Ravens are willing to bring in help for you and because of you, then they will also be willing maybe one day eventually to actually show you out. And that would, that, that's the, the, the type of philosophy change that I've been talking about. And since Greg Roman is going to be the Ravens offensive coordinator, again, same thing, the philosophy, it, it has got to change if Ravens are going to have any long-term success, any playoff success. Philosophies have got to change and with the offense, I feel like Ravens should be like, all right, look, T, you ain't get that job you interviewed for. You've been on our staff for one year, and, man, you already got an interview for offensive coordinator position. You know what? Just to enhance the job, enhance um, your experience here with the Baltimore Ravens, we're going to promote you and give you even more of a role, whether it could be a assistant offensive coordinator. I know I've – Probably never even heard of that position before. But again, Harbaugh, you know Harbaugh, he, he'll make up a position quick. But well, usually he'll make up a position so somebody can sort of decline it. But here he can make up a position so he can give somebody a raise. And he could he could do the whole assistant head coach thing too. He could do that. That's what Giro was before. He was an assistant head coach. And Giro, Giro done moved around. He was, I didn't even know he worked with the tight ends. I, had, I did not remember that at all. I remember before he was the uh, the run game coordinator, and now then he was offensive. But yeah, Giro been moving uh, around on his Ravens offensive staff. But you can allow T. Martin to do the same thing, and that could increase, possibly increase your chances of retaining him. But at the same time, if I'm T. Martin, I'm like, all right, I've been here for a year. I got an interview. I got a taste. I got a little taste to see what life is like outside of the Ravens and the possibility of moving into bigger and better. And what I mean when I say bigger and better is him being an offensive coordinator, not just a coach, not, not just a wide receiver coach, not an assistant, but an offensive coordinator. So he would be running the show for somebody's offense. So just because even if they did give him a raise and gave him a new title, new position with some new, new responsibilities, he still wouldn't be Ravens offensive coordinator. So that would enhance his current experience with the Baltimore Ravens if they did those things, but it wouldn't mean that they would be keeping him. See, because T. Martin, and I wouldn't blame him for this, and I wouldn't expect this of really anybody, and, and John Harbaugh doesn't do that. He doesn't hold people back. He's like, hey, if you want an opportunity, go. But I, I wouldn't expect T. Martin to just sit around waiting forever for Ravens' offensive coordinator position to open up. No. Uh, no, no. Who, who's going to just sit around and wait for that? No, you don't do that. Like, oh, man, I wonder <sighs> how long is Giro going to be here? Uh, yeah, I'll wait. Then if G Giro stays this entire year, okay, cool, he stays this entire year. Let's see what happens this offseason. Then if he stays the next offseason, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I'll wait around. Now, if he didn't get any other opportunities, then... He wouldn't have a choice. Well, not, not even that he wouldn't have a choice because he could obviously leave and go take on a job somewhere else. I'm sure his services would be appreciated on a lot of other teams, whether it be NFL or whether it be back at the collegiate level. But I'm sure, well, you know, I don't know. I can't speak for him. 
Because I was going to say I'm sure that he would just want an opportunity in, in the NFL. But, hey, you never know. The, if the right opportunity presents itself on the collegiate level, he could take that and run with it and go do his thing and then come back to the NFL. People do it all the time. I mean, look at Mike McDonald. He was with the Ravens as an as a intern, then as a, a linebacker coach. Got, I think got offered the defensive coordinator job, but Wink got it. And, and Mike McDonald was like, all right, Wink, you just wait a couple years and you'll see. And then, boom, full circle. Now look where we at. But anyway, he was with the Ravens. And then he ended up taking uh, the job on a collegiate level as a defensive coordinator. So he went from linebacker coach in the pros to defensive coordinator on a collegiate level. And then now he comes back to the pros and is a defensive coordinator on the pro level. And this can set him up for a future opportunity, as long as everything goes right, for him to be a head coach in the future of a team. And he's young, too. I think he's like 34 or something crazy like that. I'm like, what? I love it. It just threw me off. I'm just not used to that. Young, young dude like that being Ravens defensive coordinator. Oh, wow. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Um, but hey, we're we, we gonna see how innovative he is. We're gonna see just that that youth movement. That youth movement could be something serious when it comes uh, to the defense. So it should allow him to be creative. Um, he should be able to bring some nice, young, innovative ideas. And that's what my hope was for the Ravens offense. Uh, we're still waiting on that. Uh, and and hope, but hopefully this year, uh, with possible enhanced responsibilities, if Ravens decided to do that with T. Martin then it would be nice if they just really gave him even more of a voice. Even more. Because you saw his impact this year, but let's allow him to have even more of an impact. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. Thank you for having a positive impact on each other's lives. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting. And just like T. Martin won't be when it comes to being with the Baltimore Ravens, I'm out.